In today's video, I'm gonna give you my favorite drone moves, but more importantly, the mindset of a cinematographer. By the way, in, in all these videos, I'm not going to be shooting off to Bali. I'm going to shoot everything in my home country because I know sometimes we can be looking at Instagram reels, whatever, seeing all these cinematographers going off and it can make us feel, well, I'm not in an exotic location. But trust me, with the right mindset, using these ideas, you can capture some beautiful shots. The drone moves are not the hardest to use but it's thinking about how you implement the drone. We want to create some fire drone content to capture the imagination. Let's get into it. One of my favorite drone moves, and it's the most basic, but it's one of the best, and that is the push in. All you do is move forward with the stick, hold it at a steady speed, and let the magic happen. What you want to think about the push in is think about the story. You're telling people how you got from one location to another. Something I've been doing recently is trying to set off the drone more frequently. You see something, a little stream, you weren't expecting to see on your journey. Now, what I love doing with the push-in is, be careful with this, because the obstacle avoidance are disabled. Have it in sport mode, move it across here, and then keep an eye on your drone, keep it steady, keep it careful. But the great thing about moving at some speed and keeping it low is it can be a great introduction to then transition into another move. I also love to use the push-in shot when I'm in a city. My first thought is, where is the local river? Two reasons. Firstly, I'm going to annoy people less and not invite their privacy by setting it off in a clear open area. I'm going to have easy land, take off and landing. Secondly, it creates a beautiful composition. So I love to just fly straight down the river. Very important guys, when you, when I see a lot of beginner videos. What they do is they, they'll move forwards and then get twitchy fingers. This little finger wants to have a little, little bit of a look over here, a little bit of a look over there. Don't do it, guys. Keep, you, keep your drone moves consistent speed, consistent motions. If you mess up your shot, doesn't matter. Take your time setting it up again. Just do it again. Also with the push-in shot, especially down a river or something like that, what looks great is if you, if you go forwards and also go down with your drone. This can look really nice. Keep everything symmetrical, keep it looking nice, and it's a, it's a good move to pull off. So one of my next favorite drone moves is the opposite, it's the pull back. Now this shot in South Wales, you see a nice beach and you can hold people's attention by it. Then it reveals this lovely castle. So different drone moves used for different reasons. Great idea to do with your pull back as well is try going up as you pull back. And this can work great with a speed ramp. So try it for, hold it for, when you come to editing later, while you're filming, keep it steady, and then editing later, you can hold it for a second or so, maybe even less, maybe half a second. Speed ramp 2,500 I like to go for, maybe a little bit of a whoosh sound as well. And then when you re reach your destination, then go back to normal speed for a couple of seconds left at the end. Give it a go, guys, it's a lot of fun. With the pullback as well, look for opportunities. I love doing it with trees, moments in nature where you have that minimalism. You've already got these patterns forming and you're just revealing more and more. You see the trees through the mist, look really nice. So our third drone move, and possibly my favorite, is the orbit. Now with this, it's important to have nice, smooth cinematic settings in your drone. So let's quickly jump into settings here, guys. Top right corner, and then we go across to control and gain an expo tuning. Now the key for your orbit is the maximum angular velocity. Have that as low as possible down to 20 degrees to really smooth out the motions. And also the yaw smoothness, have that as 25. What I do with this first, you can see on the shot of the Menard Bridge, the idea of this is to go opposite 
directions on your thumbstick. You do have to just see the scenario and gauge as you're filming with this. Be very careful with your shots here because you don't have sideways obstacle avoidance on the drone. So I'm at Dinas Castle right now in Clan and um, I'm obviously going to go for the orbit shot. It's perfect for castles, creates that really nice parallaxing effect, revealing the background. Beautiful spot in Wales. You can do this with the aqueduct I was up before. It's really close, only a five minute drive or so. The next drone shot, I really, this is again, I feel like it's very underrated amongst drone pilots. We get so wrapped up in the specs. Sometimes the most basic is the best, but it's knowing the right situation to do it in. And that's the jib shot. So just very simply, your drone going up and down. This can look amazing when you reveal a sunset behind buildings or sunlight going through some trees. Really beautiful, but it is all about finding the right scenario. Also, very underrated, and I've only done this more recently over the last year. Remember the jib shot going down. This can look really nice when you're revealing old buildings, castles, that sort of thing. And I've done this quite a lot in some of my edits. So never underestimate that shot. Remember in Hollywood, guys, so much money goes into jib cranes. Sometimes because it's too easy, we forget to do these shots. Jib shots can also look really nice with waterfalls. Again, either going up, but I think I probably prefer the shot coming down on this one. So the next drone shot is the top down. So all you do is just have your gimbal wheel down and flying straight can look great. Again, going straight down a road, really popular shot, used a lot in documentaries. Top downs are also great for castles because a lot of people are fascinated with castles and you're giving them a unique perspective in your edit. You're breaking up their concentration and giving them something new to throw in to think about. With these shots, I quite like doing orbits as well. So top down orbits, it's a bit like a corkscrew effect. When you're filming your top-down shots, if there's some movement going on with your subject, it can be really effective just to leave the drone in place. Steve O'Neill sent me this awesome shot he captured of a battle reenactment. What I love about this is he's barely moving the drone because there's action going on. Let the action do the work for you. Now, my final drone move, although I'm going to throw a little bit of a bonus one in afterwards, is slider move. So as cinematographers, we have so much inconvenience of having to carry around these monster sliders. Now with your drone, it's so much easier. And I think we often underestimate this shot because all you have to do is just move the drone, move your thumbstick side to side, that's it. And it can produce some really nice results. So in this abandoned ship here, it can reveal to people, it can engage them more. What I would recommend with this is trying different compositions. So I tried this and this angle wasn't quite right. Raise the drone up a little bit higher, gimbal wheel down a little bit more. It makes all the difference. And you wanna try at different speeds as well. First time I did it, way too fast. So you have to calibrate, finish off the move, come back, do it at a slower speed, and then you'll capture it okay. One of the things with the, with this slider shot though, is I have noticed with the Mini 3 Pro, is it is more prone to, if you look very carefully in some of these shots, like at this one in the castle, look at the arch in the middle, there's a little bit of a jello effect. I think a lot of people are not gonna notice on social media, etc. but it is something to bear in mind. I film at the same location, same day, same wind conditions at this castle, and going forward, I didn't notice the jello effect. So it's something to bear in mind. That I, it's, maybe it's to do with the fact that the drone isn't going as fast. It's more prone to move around in the wind a little bit. Now, one thing I would recommend when you're first starting out is not to play around too much with the gimbal wheel. You do want to move it to create variety, but it's, it's a really good idea to sometimes just commit to your shot, particularly with things like the pullbacks. When you're coming past a building, it's really tempting to just move that gimbal wheel a bit, resist the urge. You want to keep it nice and steady, let the magic happen. You can always go back and do it again once you've done that shot. Just finish off that move first. If you're really keen to start out on a gimbal move, then the, the first one I would do is get your gimbal, have it gim, gimbal down first and then get your gimbal speed steady to start with and then move the drone forward. This can create some nice looks. Be careful with harsh lighting because remember, when you're having your gimbal down, you're going to have a darker look and then it's going to, in harsh lighting, it's, it's not going to look right. And I do sometimes just feel that going forwards can look just as good, if not better, to be fair. So gimbal moves I would be cautious about doing, particularly like if, if you're a beginner, you see some of these videos on YouTube, they're saying, move your fingers here, move your fingers there and, and gimbal move. and. 
The beginner tends to be too jittery with the moves anyway. An intermediate advanced, yeah, give it. you can give it a go if you want to. But I think there's a lot to be said for just having more locations in your edits rather than getting too funky with the moves. And like I said, there are some problems with the lighting by changing the gimbal around a little bit too much. If you wanna try out this move, I'd recommend going to a location that you're familiar with, trying it out there in overcast weather, giving it a go, see if it's worth it. Can look good, I saw a recent documentary and it looked great on that on Netflix. But what I'd encourage you guys to do is watch Hollywood films or documentaries on Netflix and see how many of these shots we've gone through today they use, a, a high percentage of them. You see these guys on YouTube, they're telling you to do these complex gimbal moves. See how often they're actually used in Hollywood. They can look really good, but I think there's a lot to be said for doing the basics well first having a nice edit, having enough footage to edit to your music, and then save your gimbal, funky gimbal moves for a day when you, it's not so important. Something that's not really spoken about much in drone videos is the importance of driving. The ability to get from one spot to another to maximize your shots. Now Dave is an incredible driver. It's the way he can navigate routes using the sat nav and also the way he can maneuver the car. We, yeah, we've been here, stuck here for about an hour, but the AA have just arrived. Don't trust the sat-nav because it can send you up a mountain and you want to get these pretty shots, but you also don't want to get stuck in snow on the side of a cliff. If you do want to plot your trip to this castle, be careful if you're going back to north, towards North Wales because the sat-nav is telling you no problem guys, go over this mountain. And it creeps up on you very quickly. You're just suddenly going along a normal road and without warning, you're there. And we saw another car that was also abandoned at the exact same spot as us. So I would recommend going back towards the aqueduct, back towards Wrexham, then get your bearings. Just don't trust the sat nav because it will try and take you to a cliff in the snow. I'll quickly show you guys how I did that speed ramp. So we'll jump into Final Cut, but you can do this in any video editing program. So I'll generally run the clip to start with for between half a second and a second. Then at the top here, click Trim Blade. So you leave that at its normal speed. And this mid section of the clip, we change that here to Custom. And then I do 2500, it's normally my favorite. Click Enter. Then towards the end of this section, zoom in on the timeline and towards the end, click your trim again, click blade, and then we'll go back to normal speed. So it's just that mid section of the clip that runs fast. Now to put some extra source onto this, we can add a zoom sound effect. And there you go, that's all there is to it, very straightforward.